Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The music is actually pumping. A uh, quite a fast beat in this game, and is putting the excitement up. And the excitement is up because this is this is going to be it for the semi-finals. Right in this game, we are going to see whether TLO has what it takes to get into the grand final. And after seeing the first two games, I I got to be honest, I'm not sure that he, he, I mean, he's, he's definitely got what it takes to get into the grand final, but maybe not today. Maybe not the day he played this game. Maybe, uh, maybe he just didn't have it, because T Tasia has been very, very solid, and TLO is two games down right now. Two games down to Tasia, and if he loses this game, then he is out, and Tasia is going to the grand final against Snoot, and yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, all right, just personal preference. I'd like to see uh, Tejo win because, yeah, because we've seen quite a few ZVZs so far, and the grand final is a best of seven. And yeah, if the grand final was a ZVZ, I don't know, man. I mean, ZVZs, like I said, I've, I've had a, I've had a ton of them, and they're good, but you know, you, you like a change every now and then. Like this TVZ, man, awesome, awesome matchup to cast. It's, it's very, very much anything can happen sort of stuff. Whereas ZVZ, it's pretty much just roach, 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 roach. And, yeah, yeah. But we will see, we will see. It does look like Tejo is going to the grand final. But you never know what's going to happen, man. And TLO is quite capable of winning three games in a row, even from this disadvantageous position he's found himself in. And, yeah, look at this, man. Tasia is actually going for something different. He's going for a uh, barracks first into Marines. He knows he was in a lot of trouble last game. Going for the uh, command center first before barracks. Even though he built it up here, there was still a crap load of lings coming in. And it was quite scary. And yeah, he knew that he was in a bad spot. So he's going for something a little bit, a little bit better. Um, not better, and safer, I suppose getting a very fast factory up as well so that's going to be some very very early harassment and meanwhile TLO going for a uh, I would a super uh, it's not super early hatchery this is about his normal timing so a 14 hatch 14 pull sort of deal and yeah that's going to be pretty standard and I think he's just cancelling and rebuilding this as soon as it gets low enough so he's keeping this worker alive pretty much forever and Really, really good play here. He's not going to let this finish, I don't think. There we go. Cancels and builds it again. And this is actually really good. If you don't mind wasting six minerals every 15 seconds or so, you can basically keep that drone alive forever. As long as there's only like two marines are actually uh, attacking it. Once you get like three or four, they can actually just destroy it too fast. And yeah but he can't afford to get more marines at this point because he needs to sack his hellions out man and he's actually got a was he getting some scvs to start helping this or not i don't know no, no. i do not know but a couple of links coming in to see what's going on they will see the hatchery this drone is <laughs> doing a stupidly good job of staying alive here and this is going to be the longest longest time i've ever seen a drone survive while it's being attacked and just to get it up once again, that's like the seventh extractor that it has built. And Tejas just uh, got to say, you know what? I'm just gonna. He's got to. I don't know. He doesn't want to expose the Hellions yet, but I guess the links coming in saw the Hellions, so the secret's pretty much out. Man, look, there were seven workers being built there. So TLO getting up the harvest account. He's going from very, very nice macro-style play. Two Hellions coming in. They see three queens. They're going to get the hell out of there. They would lose so much health trying to go in there. And TLO, man, get some freaking units out here. Please do not tell me you cannot afford a single Marine. Sorry, did I say TLO? I meant to... Oh, look at that, man. Bit of missed micro by TLO. Letting that go all the way up. And it's finally going to get destroyed there. And that poor worker, he, uh, he tried his best, but he did not succeed. TLO getting down a six and a half minute at third base over here. So he's going for full on Zerg macro style. He's not going for anything crazy this game. We saw in game one, he actually delayed his third quite a bit and it really, really did cost him. 
Oh, those queens, man. Not, not a good idea. This one might actually get taken out by the Hellions, but no, just getting chased away. And he'd love nothing more than to move that Widow Mine into a disadvantageous position for the Zerg. Maybe even in here. If you get the Widow Mine down there, that would be completely awesome. But right now, he's just sniping Creep Tumors. There we go. Finally getting taken out. And yes, the Queens are not going to be happy about that. What have we got going on in terms of tech? Roaches coming out for the Zerg player. Terran player, meanwhile, is going for Hellbats. And where is the Medivax? He does not have any Medivax coming out at the moment. Yeah, there's already one there, and it's already got two Hellbats in it. So this is going to be pretty awesome. We don't have any spines on the ground. We do have a spore. So he's getting out a few spores here. And that's obviously just for a Medivac defense. He's got two Queens out here as well. So he knows there's a medevac somewhere, or he guesses that there is one. And this is just going to confirm it. This overlord seeing the medevac. He's going to come in. He's going to have time to drop it off, though. There we go. Oh, there we go. Dropping it in. This one's going to get pulled apart by the queens. They're trying to run around, but he's done a great job at getting those. Uh, he's actually splitting them up. But these guys, oh, another hit like that, man. And all of those drones would be dead. But he's not going to get it. The queen's just completely stopping that stuff over there. And great job. Meanwhile, he's pushing forward a little bit with the Hellions. Dropping a Widow Mine right down here in preparation for the fourth. I do not... He, he, the Terran player does know about this. Because these uh, Medivac actually flew over this base. So yeah, yeah, great job there. And he's decided not to go for a drop anymore. He's just going to send the forces down. And you have no doubt that his destination is going to be this third base. He wants to wipe that off the face of the earth. And meanwhile, he's getting his own third base down. He's doing a lot of good stuff. Tanks, Marauders, Stimpak, all sorts of awesomeness going down. I don't think either player has really started on the, uh, gotten any upgrades yet. But the Zerg is going for 1-1 one -one ranged ground. So yeah, definitely looks like Roach Hydra in this game. And there's Marauders loving to hit the Queens. Might be able to get this one as well. It's off the creep, but I'm not sure if he knows it's off the creep. Guys, it's be so easy to take this Queen out right now, but he's uh, more worried about the hatchery, I guess. And there's Hellbats, man, running in. Gonna roast a whole lot of drones, but the Roaches are out now. The Terran can deal with these two Roaches, but a few more Roaches, and it's going to be game over for this Terran army. Ah, uh, yeah, so here we go. Four Roaches coming out. And uh, I don't know. I think the Terran could deal with it, but he'd probably take too many losses. And he did what he came to do. He took out the third base. And this has really been the tale so far in, uh, I think it was game one. And now in game three of uh, Tasia keeping on top of that third base from the Zerg. Really doing a good job. Looks like we've got uh, Roach Speed and 1-1. One, one. So his Roaches are looking very, very strong here. But a Siege Tank coming down. To do all sorts of stuff. He needs to get another siege tank over there to help defend the uh, third base. But, of course, an overseer is quite easy to get him up there. And then you can just snipe him off the edge of the cliff. So he's got to be worried about that as well. A TLO going Roach Hydra in a very, very big way. He's got 1-1. One, one. He's got 2-2 two, two on the way. His Tasia has only got 1-1 one, one on the way. Dumping in a couple of Hellbats going to do a run. Maybe going for the third base. Maybe going for the primary base if he can get it. It looks That looks fairly easy to get in. It just goes in straight and drops him around there. But if Tage is close enough, then he should be able to do a good job. Look at all these roaches, man. He's got a fair amount of units here, but he really needs the siege tank back up to deal with this many roaches. Although, maybe, maybe he can just straight up deal with them. He's very, very marauder-heavy army here. And the roaches were split up to begin with, coming in from different directions. And look at these hellbats, man, doing a great job here. So yeah, the Roach is not in one cohesive unit, so when they run away, they uh, basically they're already split up. And they're just going to run back here. The Hellbats have chased away all competition, but the Roach is coming back. Drops them down to get a couple of drones, and then picks them straight back up again. Or at least picked one of them up. And yeah, the Medivac coming up there. And will he see the fourth? Does he see? He has not seen the fourth. That would have been worth it if you scout across and see the fourth, because Taja knew there was a fourth coming down he would have been forced to go in there and do some damage to really get some stuff going hopefully this medevac comes down goes towards the um he can't he still hasn't seen the fourth but he's definitely he's going to go down he's going to try and see the third i think he's got enough forces to uh take out however many of these roaches are here i don't know where the rest is he's, he's 
taking into a lot of hydras at the moment. So he may actually have enough to take out these force. Marauders very good versus roaches, not so good against hydras. And with 2-2 two, two just about to come out, TLO is getting to be a very, very scary roach hydra type player at the moment. And yeah, this guy's shooting chased away. He almost certainly, yes, he does know about the fourth base now. So Tasia, the game is starting to turn around on him. He's getting 2-2. Two, two. He's getting vehicle weapons as well. Yeah, that's, I thought that was an Infernal Pre-Igniter for a second, but it is the vehicle weapons. He knows the game is starting to turn around on him, but he is not completely unprepared. He's already got four tanks, and tanks, of course, are a very, very good counter to Hydras. So with some excellent micro from our Terran player, we might see him push this army away, but TLO in the head, ahead, army-wise, and really need to get these tanks siege, really need to get the barrier in the middle. The Hydra's getting a nice flank, and the tanks are a little bit exposed here. They're going to get taken out, and Tasia making a bit of a mistake there in terms of how he set his army out. And TLO, I think, is the uh, upgrade, uh, just the upgrades he's got as well. Just giving him such an advantage here. Maybe if he had got those tanks behind a solid line of Marines Marauders, he might have done a bit of a better job there, but the tanks were exposed, and TLO took advantage of it. So yeah, not going to be good, and these forces are just going to go in for the kill. If they take out this third base, then yeah, Tasia is going to be in a lot of trouble. And really, really good stuff from TLO getting back into this series, showing Tasia that he has got what it takes. But he still has to compete with these couple of siege tanks here. But Tasia, man, is getting whittled down quite badly. He's 50 supply behind, and this may be it right there. If these two tanks go down. I do not know that Tasia is going to have enough to finish off this game. He just doesn't have the forces anymore. And this fourth base, man, is really... I mean, he had the perfect unit composition already. He had his upgrades coming out faster than uh, Tasia did. And yeah, he had a bit, bit better macro, I believe. 68 over 56, so yeah, really doing a good job. And Tasia, man, he, did, he had some tanks. But he did not have enough, and he did not guard the ones he had well enough. So it's just the micro in that battle in the middle just was was not good enough in as far as keeping his tanks um, keeping his tanks put together. And yeah, that has given TLO the advantage here. And yeah, he's just going to push in. He's just going to wipe everything out. He's losing units, but Tasia is losing more units. And there we go. There's the GG from Tasia. TLO doing a fantastic job with the Roach Hydra. It's just, it really, I mean, this is no fancy tactic here. This is Roach Hydra, and that's it, man. You build them up, you send them in, you do awesome sorts of stuff. And a proper, a really, really well-played um, Triple M plus tanks can hold, but it, it's a very it's a very evenish sort of matchup. Triple M versus uh, Triple M plus Tanks versus Roach Hydra. I mean, you've got to have the Marauder numbers to be able to race the Roaches, and you've got to have the Siege Tanks able to hit the Hydras without the Hydras hitting the Tanks. And that's not what we saw in the middle. The Hydras got right up close and were just hitting the Tanks all over the place. So yeah, that was just um, that was just not, not the best micro from Taja. And yeah, he has dropped down a game now. He uh, was winning. But now it is 2-1, still in Tasia's favour, and TLO has swung the momentum around to his side. So, yeah, what is going to happen this game, man? I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy actually because TLO dis was very aggressive in the uh, in the previous game, and in this game, Tasia went for a very defensive sort of build. He went for the barracks way before the command center went down, and yeah, quite a bit more defensive, not the crazy early commencement like he normally goes. And he was beaten. In the macro side of the game, he was beaten. So it appears like uh, Taja can either go really, really early uh, economy or defensive play. And uh, TLO has an answer for both of those. So, yeah, I, I do not know, man. I, I do not know. Maybe he'll go back to the play he did in the second game, because that actually worked out pretty well for him. The command center as part of the wall on the top ramp, he built the supply depot, command center, and then barracks to fill out the wall. And that actually worked out pretty well for him. So, 
I mean, it's the best of both words. You get your economy up nice and fast, and you're well defended. So I'd like to see him do that again, because, yeah, leaving the command center till later really did not pay off, because TLO just got such a massive army, and he had just more economy than Tasia. So moving on to game four, we're going to be closely scrutinizing what Tasia's uh, starting starting build is because we've really seen a whole bunch of different stuff and yeah I'm, I'm guessing early command center but I don't know if he's just gonna plop it down or if he's gonna put it down as part of the wall I, I'd like to see part of the wall but nah, never mind and uh, TLO man apart from that one game where he went in for crazy Ling rushes he's just been going for 14 hatch straight into pool every single game and I mean it's a good strategy it's a good tactic you get the economy up a little bit faster then they're going for pull then hatch and you still get lings out early enough to deal with most of the stuff that uh, Terrans and uh, Protoss can throw at you. It's a little bit more dice you get zerg but yeah still good. So going on to game 4 now. TLO knocking out a win here and will this be the first of 3 wins in a row? Or will Tasia nail it home in game four or five? We will find out in game four um, and possibly game five. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Harry Muppet.